This week was a tipping point for Dungeons and Dragons, RPGs, miniature games, card games, board games, tabletop gaming in general. If you're someone that loves physical media, then huge news has arrived and it's not good. We are in a watershed moment. We've reached the point just before the point of no return. The point of return before the point of no return. And this is going to affect our respective tabletop hobbies. Now, I'm sure the Dungeons and Dragons players at this stage will will be familiar with the letters AI. Yes, that's right. It's another video about discount brand Terminators. That's not a huge surprise. There have been various stories about AI dominating the headlines in the RPG and tabletop news media recently, especially stories emanating from Hasbro slash Wizards of the Coast. First, there were the supposed leaks that Hasbro Wizards are working on secret AI DMs to replace flesh and blood games masters. Then it was revealed that they're working on AI for their tabletop games and have outsourced it to an Italian company. And then AI art showed up in the latest D&D expansion book, Bigsby's Glory Hole of the Giants 2. Though Hasbro Wizards did claim that that one was a little accident. Like the kind of accident that I plan on making when I'm too old for anyone to make me clean up after myself. And you can't stop me either. I've worked in hospitality. I've earned this. And if any of these incidents are news to you, then you should probably subscribe to this channel in order to keep up to date with all the latest tabletop gaming news, especially now that the AI wars are upon us. And that war just moved on another front because all those AI scandals were just the beginning. Things have just gotten worse. Unsurprisingly, it wasn't a mega corporation like Hasbro Wizards that have fired the first shot that will herald the upcoming AI apocalypse for tabletop gaming. Shockingly, that honor has gone to a totally different company. In fact, it was the tabletop industry equivalent of a mom and pop store called Frick's Games that decided to go all in on the AI Expressway. And much like Terminator inventor Cyberdyne, you've probably never heard of them until now. But Frick's Games produced the incredibly popular board game Terraforming Mars, which is a game all about terraforming Mars. Okay, it's not the most imaginative title, it kind of explains the AI. And Fricks were recently caught using AI art for their most recent expansion to Terraforming Mars called More Terraforming Mars. Or Terraforming Mars Automata, which is a very ironically named box considering the whole AI art thing. And unlike Hasbro Wizards, Fricks games are actually selling AI art as part of their game on purpose. For real! For real! No, they're not exactly proud of this. It wasn't advertised as a selling point in their Kickstarter campaign. In fact, it was only revealed to the public that the game seems to be entirely made up of AI art because Kickstarter basically forced them to admit it. As per Kickstarter's new AI art policy, they're requires all campaigns to declare whether or not that campaign is using AI art. And as a result, Frick's Games on Kickstarter answered the question of what parts of your project will use AI generated content with th this statement. It's it's pretty long, but it basically goes like AI, more like I, 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 I. I'm sorry. Though, according to Frick's Games, the AI art that has been used for Terraforming Mars is impure and also includes a little bit of human interaction as well. It's a mix of people and machine, like a really sexy robot that resembles art drawn by fifth graders. Uh, actually, that's a cyborg. Now, as Frick's Games are basically the very first major company to come out in favor of using AI art in their products, they've argued that essentially the future is now, old man, and so they've embraced the Matrix. And this revelation was not met with much acceptance by the wider creative tabletop community. In fact, artists, content creators, and news sites have been positively livid about all this, and it is being treated as a huge scandal in the tabletop gaming press. In fact, as of, well, today, there is currently a list of reviewers and content creators that have now committed to refusing to provide coverage to any games that include AI art. And that list of content creators includes some really big names like No Pun Included and Shut Up and Sit Down. As Efka from No Pun Included put it, quote, We say no to your penny-pinching, corner-cutting, art-thieving charlatanry. Get out. We don't want it. A pretty strong sentiment shared by many, like a banana at an orgy. Discourse fact 39. Keep your bananas in the freezer before any orgy or else they'll get kind of mushy. Subscribe to the channel for more discourse facts like these. Now, 
when Hasbro Wizards got caught using AI art in a kind of similar situation, and then they faced a similar backlash, they meekly apologized and claimed that they weren't aware of its use in their products. However, in this case, Frick's games have absolutely doubled down on the use of AI, and they've even revealed that AI was used not only in the art for the game, but also in the design process of the game as well. They aren't ashamed of this, and in an interview with Polygon, Frick's claimed that AI is, quote, too powerful a technology to ignore. And presumably their spokesman in this interview was Gaius Baltar himself, because they've also said that using AI art has not only saved them money, but also decreased development time for their game. They have said that generative AI has allowed them to bring their Terraforming Mars expansions to market a lot faster. Oh, and then they stuck the boot into Hasbro Wizards, saying that Wizards' recent policy of disallowing their artists to use AI for art in their products will be impossible to enforce because all working artists are beginning to use AI in their processes. And so, from that perspective, Frick's games are just being sensible. At least according to Frick's games. And this entire incident, this scandal, is extremely notable, as Frick's Games are the first major game company in the tabletop space to come out as simply A-OK -okay with AI art. And while there has been a huge backlash to this pro-AI declaration, and everyone I've spoken to, and every forum I've visited, and every rustic pub filled with the rugged, salt-of-the-earth folk who populate Ireland's potato mines that I have surveyed, they have all told me that they are against the use of AI in this manner, and that Frick's Games' position on AI and that the entire thing is a scandalous outrage. But, however, you wouldn't know that to look at the Terraforming Mars Kickstarter campaign, which has been a huge, rock-roaring, rollicking success, pulling in almost $1.5 million, absolutely eclipsing the original goal of 10 grand. Without a doubt, the game is a huge success, buoyed by a huge fan base, and the Kickstarter campaign will easily slide into the list as one of the top 10 biggest Kickstarters of the year. And while some companies have taken this as an opportunity to come out against the use of AI in tabletop games like Ninja Star Games have done, I can't help but be worried that this successful Kickstarter will embolden larger corporations like Hasbro Wizards to turn to generative AI for assets in the future. Clearly, this Kickstarter campaign demonstrates that for a large proportion of people, the use of AI art is either desirable or simply not a deal breaker if they really want a game. And let's be honest, for a company like Hasbro Wizards, what Frick's Games has said is true. The use of AI art and design does save money and time for corporations. And at a conservative estimate of $3 million annually spent on art for Magic the Gathering alone by Hasbro Wizards, that's a fine chunk of change to save on for a company obsessed with only one thing. Maximum carnage! I mean, I mean profit. Maximum profit. Money. Do dollars. M maybe some light carnage. And this is especially concerning as we enter a digital D&D realm with their new digital virtual tabletop system filled with digital digital art assets, all of which could easily be replicated in endless variations designed by an AI bot with all the creativity of an NFT ape creator. Oh boy, I can't wait for my ape escape future. I still refuse to use analog sticks. So okay, here's my position on this. Does this concern you? Well, it maybe should. Now while there are lots of content creators who have produced sophisticated explanations about the economics of AI art and how it hurts the wider gaming industry and the ethical issues with displacing these workers and the theft of art, yada yada, I suspect that many of these arguments will simply not convince many people to not buy AI-designed and arted games. After all, we all have rare earth mineral machines made via slave labor in our pockets. We're basically the Dark Eldar. What can I say? I don't think most consumers are going to lose sleep over artists losing their jobs. That might be cynical of me, but hey, I've never watched a group of people that sell their labor for a certain task trying to prevent their replacement by capitalism itself and win. I don't think artists or writers or f***ing YouTubers like me will succeed where the weavers, cobblers, and switchboard operators feel. So instead, here is my sterling defense for human artists, my sprinkle of water into the hard drive, the one argument that should penetrate deep into consumer culture. <laughs> Ahem. AI art looks like dog shit. It looks really, really bad. And this is true for the art in Terraforming Mars. It really is terrible. Look at this. 
look at it. It's just, it's rubbish. Ew, ew. It's just bad. And in fact, the original terraforming Mars art was a real anomaly too when it first came out. Absolutely everyone I know who has ever seen the art for terraforming Mars has commented on the fact that it looks really bad. And in fact, online, there were threads dedicated to asking why it looked like something you'd find in the sci-fi themed version of the Bates Motel. And the fact that the original game had such terrible looking art, whether it was drawn by real artists or not, means that Frick's games are uniquely positioned to sell a game that's made up of art that has all the creativity of an AI opponent in Warcraft 3 on the easy mode. Because that art really did look bad and the game has succeeded in spite of its piss per image rather than because of it. But that's very specific to terraforming Mars. It's just a bad looking game. But that's not true of every game and most games actually do have great art and to move to AI art would be a genuine step backwards for those games. Love it or hate it, D&D, Warhammer, Magic the Gathering, Arkham Horror, all these games have great looking art or at the very least serviceably good art and that adds a ton of value to the experience of these games. This is something that AI art cannot replicate and I suspect that audiences won't stand for really bad looking art in most of their games. So that will at least protect the wider industry from the adoption of AI art by the big boys. At least for now. But not forever, so long as AI art continues to get better and look better. And I'm afraid to say that terraforming Mars is a very dead canary in the coal mine for gaming. And I suspect that we'll see consumer opinions soften on this topic as time goes on. Actually, I think they're already softening right now with this game launch. The Kickstarter money for terraforming Mars has kept going up even after all of this was revealed. It's just that Frick's games are the first to push the line and the audacity of them them will compel other groups to try their hand as well. This is how it always works. One company breaks from the pack and pushes the line, and then all the others follow. If there's money to be made or money to be saved, believe me, Hasbro Wizards and all their ilk will do it. There will be people watching this. Minds that are to our minds as ours are to those of the beasts that perish. Intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic are regarding this campaign with envious eyes and slowly and surely they are drawing their plans against us. <laughs> people will mention that you cannot copyright AI art and that this is a big problem for those larger companies, that is a concern. But that's only a temporary one and it will likely be solved either by a future court case or by forthcoming legislation. Already in America, there are committees being formed to look into AI art and I really don't think they're going to come down against big companies. Believe me, if big business want this to happen, it will. This is the future and it will be here sooner than any of us think. And yes, even Dungeons and Dragons is getting in on the use of AI art. Click here to find out about that. Click! And if you want to support the kind of tabletop gaming coverage that only an unhinged human mind can create, then please check out my Patreon. It's the only way that I can afford to stockpile as many bags of coffee as possible for the upcoming AI apocalypse. You'll also get bonus videos and hang out in live streams with me too. Link below. And a huge thanks to my patrons, especially CryptoCav, Novani, and Travis Hunter. Thank you so much, guys. I'll catch y'all next time. Bye bye